Hey everyone, it's Miss Teresa again in this beautiful sunny afternoon. Have you guys been outside this weekend? It has been fantastic and I know you probably can notice that Miss Teresa has been outside because she is rocking a little bit of the sun uh, burn look here. Yesterday we were outside all day working on things outside and it was just so gorgeous but we kind of forgot about something. You know in Michigan it's been a little chilly for a while and yesterday was probably our really first nice beautiful day except it was pretty windy and we forgot that we need suntan lotion. So I'm kind of rocking the pink look today. Hopefully that doesn't scare anybody away. As I deliver to you guys today our children's message from Pastor Kyle's sermon this morning. Now hopefully everybody was able to tune in at 10.30 on our main Facebook page, Countryside Free Methodist Church, and you guys were able to watch his sermon there. And this month, we're tackling some big questions. And so this is our children's sermon to go along with that, and we're gonna talk about a big question that people have, all right? Um, one of the big questions that we're gonna tackle this month is about creation. Um, you know, some people wonder how everything here came to be. And so our message today, our lesson, is going to talk about that. It's going to answer that big question of how did we all get here? And was it an accident? Was it um, um, like, um, was it a creator who, who put us here? Or was it just this big bang that happened? And so I want to do uh, the lesson for you guys today. And we're going to start by answering this big question. How do you think that the world was created. Um, have you guys ever heard the phrase Big Bang? You know, some people believe that this earth started with a great big explosion. And they believe that from there, the universe kind of changed and all came together on its own spontaneously into what we see today. And they believe that the world has changed over time and to uh, evolve into different kinds of creatures. Well, we want to talk about uh, exploring Big Bang today. And first, I want to give you guys an illustration. You know, the people that believe in the Big Bang Theory, they believe that everything just kind of came together, just like we talked about. Do you guys play with Legos? Do you guys like to build lots and lots of cool things and, and lots of uh, creations? And I know I have um, some nieces and nephews that they love to build um, all kinds of cities and robots and people and all kinds of creations and it's really super fun. So I bet you guys like to play with Legos too. Well, when you make something, you have to put it together, right? Sometimes you follow the directions, sometimes you guys think of things on your own with your creativity, but you always have to put it together. If I took some Legos and I had a handful of them and I threw them up in the air, could I expect them to come down and just miraculously and spontaneously form into one of your Lego creations. Hmm, I don't think that's very likely, right? Anybody who's played with Legos for a while knows that you can't just throw them all over the place and expect them to come together on their own. Somebody, somewhere, has to put them together deliberately in a pattern and in a way that's gonna make a great creation. Well, we are going to learn today that there was someone who did that. There was someone who carefully and uh, purposefully put us together in all of this world that you see. There was a creator who did all of that. And I don't think that it was just some random chance and happening. So let's dive in to the book of Genesis. It's the very first book of the Bible. And it's going to talk about how all of this started, the beginning Long ago, there was no sun, no moon, no sky, nothing at all, except for God. God chose to make the world, and it took him six days to do so. God created something different every single day. So let's dive in and look and see what he created. So on day one, God created time, space, matter, and light. Before God created the world, there was no time. Only God existed. He has always been and he always will be. God also had to create a space to put all of his creations in. And that space was the earth. He created that too. 
At first, the earth was dark. It was empty and it was covered with water. God's spirit was there and moved above the waters to create a beautiful world. God spoke and created light. The darkness disappeared. God called the light day and the darkness night. This was the first day of creation and God said the light was good. Well, on the second day, God separated the area between the earth and the water. And the Bible calls this earth, this area heaven. Today we call this area sky. The air is made up of just the right amount of gases, mainly nitrogen, some oxygen, and a small amount of other gases like carbon dioxide. God designed the air to be exactly what his creations needed it to be. Well then, on the third day, God commanded the dry land and he and the water and he called the water seas and he made grass and plants and trees and each tree had its own special kind of seed and fruit. I wonder what your favorite fruit or favorite tree is that God made. God was pleased with what he had made and he said that it was good. On the fourth day, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun was to shine and be bright in the sky for daytime, and the moon was to give light at night. They were also to help people keep track of days and seasons and years, and God also called those things good. On day five, the earth was ready for animals. This is one of my favorite parts. There was water, there was air, there was soil, there were plants and fruit for food. And so next, God made flying animals and the animals that lived in the sea. He made all kinds of birds and all kinds of fish and creatures that live in the sea. Isn't it amazing all the different types of things that God made? You know, he could have just made one kind of tree and one kind of animal, one kind of bird, one kind of fish, but he didn't do that. He expressed his creativity and made all kinds of things for us. There are so many different types of birds. Have you guys been looking out your windows these past few weeks? Does anybody have bird feeders out there that they've been watching all the different kinds of birds that have come to visit them? I know that's kind of a highlight for us is looking out the window right now and seeing all the different types of birds that we really never noticed before because we got kind of used to just going through life and not taking advantage of looking around. And so it's been really cool to see the different types of birds that God made and the different types of fish. I know some of you guys have been out fishing and you've been, I've been able to see your pictures of different types of fish that you guys have been catching. So isn't it cool that God didn't just create one kind of thing? He created lots and lots of them. Well, on day six, God created land animals. He made cows and sheep, elephants, zebras, and dogs, all kinds of crawling animals, dinosaurs even, and all other animals. This is so awesome. I love animals, and I would love to know, what's your favorite kind of animal? Do you guys have a favorite kind of animal that you love? Isn't it amazing that just like the birds and the fish, he created all different kinds, and we all have our favorites, don't we? I have a daughter who loves polar bears. My favorite animal is the penguin. And it's cool that God made all these different animals for us to enjoy, and they also have their own purposes in, in the earth that he created. And so God was very pleased after he did all this with all that he had made. And on the sixth day, God started with his special creation that topped all everything else that he had already created and it was guess what it was humans he created humans to be in his own image after everything that he created and he saw that it was good he still felt that the world needed humans someone created in his own image and so he created a man and he called him adam and then from Adam, God created a woman named Eve. And those were our very first people. So in just six days, God had made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, all creatures, big, small, and humans too. And then after that, he rested on the seventh day. 
because he needed a break probably, right? <laughs> but God saw all that he had made and it was very good. You know, he rested to give us that example. It's great for us to create and work and do things, but we all need a day to rest, don't we? And so he saw everything and he saw that it was good. Let's bring this creation lesson home to how it relates to us today. You know, we talked in the beginning that some people believe that this whole world was just created by a big bang, a big surprise, a big uh, explosion that just kind of threw everything together the way it is. And they don't believe that there was a creator who created things on purpose. They believe that it just exploded all into being. Why do you think that there are some reasons to believe that there was a powerful God that created the universe? You know, some people don't believe that there was a creator, but why? what are the reasons why we should believe that there was a creator and it didn't just happen by accident. Well, there's a universe. If you walk into the kitchen and there's a delicious dinner on the table, do you think that it just popped onto the table? No, of course not. The dinner just didn't just appear out of nowhere. It didn't just walk out of the fridge. Somebody had to put it together, right? You know that when you see dinner on the table that somebody created it. Well, that's like our universe. You know, the world, the people, the plants, the animals, this all is designed way too complicated for it just to have happened by chance. So a reason to believe that there was a creator, it is our universe because it's so complex and so different that it couldn't just happen by chance. You know, what if I said that there was a new creature that I had made when I just threw some glass, some plastic, maybe some metal, and an old battery. What if I told you I made a new creature, creature, creation, when I threw all that in my backyard last month? I just threw all that stuff into a pile, and all of a sudden now, there's a new creature out there. What would you think? Would you believe me? Mm, probably not. You wouldn't believe me because it really couldn't happen that way. All of the things that we see on this earth are way too complex to have just happened. They needed a creator to put them together. The Bible tells us that that creator was God. You know, the things that we see today, even the things that, that have um, been recently created, they had to have somebody to make them. And God made us so wonderfully. He gave us the abilities to create. You know, we talked about our Lego creations earlier. He designed us to be creative, just like he was when he made the earth. And so all the inventions and things that we see now, it is because God gave us that ability to create just like him. So the Bible tells us that there was not a big bang that happened and just spontaneously put all this together. Instead, it had to come from someone, some being, and that being was God. Today we learned that God created all of the things in the universe, the sky, the land, the water, the moon, the sun, the stars, the planets, the animals, and us. That's a big list, isn't it? You know, when we look around and see all of these things that we learned about today, we should be amazed and thank God and praise him for the creation that he made. Remember we talked about all the cool things that we're seeing and maybe some of us are seeing or noticing for the very first time. It's great uh, to believe that God created those things, but we also should be thanking him for it and being amazed by it and praise him for creating those things. So let's take a second now and let's pray and thank him and praise him for all of his creation that we learned about. Father God, we thank you today for this beautiful sunshine. God, I even thank you for the sunburn that I got yesterday because it means that your sun was out, that you created, and it was a gorgeous day and we could be outside enjoying it. God, I do thank you that you didn't just throw things together willy-nilly. You created everything on purpose. And it has such a wonderful design. It's so complex, but it's so beautiful. God, the flowers that you created that we're starting to see poke up through the ground, they're all so beautiful and so different. The birds that we see by our windows, God, all the different colors and varieties, they look so different. They're all so amazing. God, the fish that you are allowing some of us to see and, and to catch. God, we thank you for that. We thank you that not only are they provided for us to look at and enjoy, but some of these things are provided for food for us, God. You know how to fit everything together. The trees that give us fruit for food so that we can uh, be sustained in our lives. The animals that we can uh, 
also enjoy for food, God. We just thank you that you had a purpose for everything and you worked it all out. And God, we do thank you for creating us as well. We thank you that you created us special with wonderful talents and abilities. And there's no two people alike. Even twins, God, have differences that you put inside of them. And God, we just thank you that you created us wonderfully and for a special purpose. And we thank you. We are amazed at everything, God. When we look at the beautiful skies in the morning and at night, and we look at the stars and everything around that you created, wow, God, it takes our breath away. And what an amazing job that you did. And God, we're so thankful for it. And God, we believe that you did it. We believe and trust you. We don't believe that it just happened because we threw some stuff together in our backyard or threw our Legos up in the air and it just turned into all this stuff. We know and believe and have faith that you put it lovingly together. So thank you, God, for doing that. Help us not to take it for granted. Help us to enjoy all that you've created. And help us, God, in the future to remember the creator and to praise you for it. Be with us now as we continue our week. Help us all to stay healthy and have a, a great time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that is a little bit about a big, huge question that a lot of people ask. How did all of this happen and how did we get here? And I hope that today we help to answer some of those questions. Now, the next couple of weeks of this month, because this is May already, can you believe it? We're starting a new month and a new set of lessons. And so this month on Sundays, every lesson is going to be answering another big question. You know, it's so normal to have big questions. There is nothing wrong with asking them. And you know what? I feel okay to admit that I don't know all the answers. But I know who does, and that's God. And sometimes he gives us those answers when we talk about things and study through things. And sometimes there are still questions that we will never know the answers to until we get to see him face to face and ask him ourselves. And so this Sunday, every Sunday this month, stay tuned so that we can talk through some of these big unanswered questions that we might be having. Well, I hope that you guys have learned something this week. I hope that you take something with you. If nothing else, this week, stop and pause and remember that God created everything around us. Go out there and enjoy it. It's so easy for us to stay stuck in the house and we can stay stuck on our tablets or our electronics and we can forget that God created all of this stuff out there. Even the stuff inside too, I guess, right? So don't forget this week to look around. Look and see what God has created. And then when you see it, thank him for it and enjoy it because that's why he put it here for us to enjoy. Well, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great day today. Get some rest, just like God rested, right? Get ready for our week. A lot of you guys are doing distance learning, and I'm praying for you every day that that's going well and that you guys are staying safe and healthy. And boy, I'm praying that we can be together in the future soon because I miss each and every one of you. We'll stay safe, stay healthy, and have lots of fun. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.